we live in a world where we're bombarded with, you should do this, you should do this. I'm like, hey, I'm doing this, like X, Y, Z, to better myself in this way. Just because I can't add A, B, and C to that doesn't mean that I should feel bad about myself. Like, do what you can and just be better than your past self. Oh, it's a guest day. We've got Erin Azar, guys. She is our professional struggle runner. If you've ever (laughs) heard yourself a struggle runner, oh my God, it's like- Rachel, this was made for you though. I just want to say like, if you you remember back to like starting the podcast, Rachel once described herself as a runner trudging through a field of, uh, wait, what was it? A turtle trudging through a field of peanut butter. Oh my God. I'm struggle runner and and then some. I it just um but the thing is you're not alone, first of all, because a million people on TikTok are completely relating to Erin's struggle running. She is a 39-year-old mom of three from Pennsylvania, and she has been featured on Runner's World. She has been on the Today Show. She is huge on socials and she doesn't run for the fact of winning marathons. Imagine she just runs for her own self-help. And her story of, you know, starting this community and following just based on this relatable idea that you don't have to be great at running to be a runner um, has really resonated with people. And we loved this episode. We loved this episode so much. I think our communities have obviously had a big overlap and we've been waiting to get Erin on for a little while now. So hope we hopefully you enjoy this episode because we had such a fun discussion with her. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Thick Thighs Save Lives podcast. I'm Kelsey. Hi, guys. I'm Rachel. We have Erin Azar on with us today, who is honestly the the notion that she pushes it's challenging that the only reason to run is to run faster and better and instead there might be some other reasons behind running erin is our um professional struggle runner and she's here to talk to us today about uh all the things that she's doing with her community and amazing socials that are just lifting up your everyday runner welcome erin Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. We're so happy to have you here. It's going to be, um, I think, a really great podcast to just bring everybody back down to earth about like what fitness was meant to be um, and what fitness looks like in an everyday setting. And you do such a beautiful job of that. So we're really excited to have you on. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. Yeah. I think our ladies are really going to love hearing from you too. I get tagged in your videos all the time uh-huh. with just like relatable content and just being like, hey, this is super fun. Like you said one of these things and just like getting the idea really out there that like when we do something and we enjoy it, we don't necessarily have to strive to be good at it, be the best at it, Mm -hmm. just like enjoy it like we're enjoying life. I don't know why this we've like strayed so far away from this in like general society, but I'm so glad you're pushing that out there. Yeah. I mean, I will say that when I first started running, which was a few years ago at this point, I was desperately trying to find people that were just realistic about it. And like, hey, is the the videos that I was putting out, it was basically my way of saying, hey, is there anyone else, uh, maybe a mom that has a little extra weight, that's having a little hard time running, like, because nobody was showing it. And so I think it definitely resonated, obviously, because here I am. But <laughs> um, yeah, at first it was it was really hard to find content like that that I could relate to and stuff that didn't make me feel like, "Mm, you know what, maybe I shouldn't even do this running thing at all because these people are quote unquote runners. I am not a quote unquote runner because I'm not X, Y, Z. So it's, it was like, you know, this hurdle that I had to go over to be like, oh, actually I run, I'm a runner and I can have friends too. 
<laughs> can have friends. Isn't isn't that the weirdest thing though? Like yes. you start out by being like, I have no there's I don't see any of this content out here. Like I'm just gonna share this idea. I'm just a person. And then thousands of people, 90% of people are like, actually that's me too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely thought because this was uh first on TikTok is what I did. So I was a hundred percent like 12 year old boys are gonna come for me in the comments and be like, ew this is gross. Like, why do you look like that? And it was the complete opposite. I, the algorithm algorithmed and yeah, it was crazy. The amount of people that saw it and were like, wow, me too. Or why doesn't anyone else show this? I mean, I feel like now there's a lot more relatable, not just running, but fitness in general content. Um, and hopefully people that are just starting, that's kind of what is fed to them instead of this kind of um out of reach fitness standard you know absolutely and I think you know the the groundbreakers the trailblazers of that need to you know really be appreciated because you're right when you started it just that wasn't everyday content and now we're seeing more and more of it and I think that that's just a really beautiful thing you have amassed a very large following you have almost a million followers on TikTok, which is ridiculous, (laughs) and um, a huge Instagram. And you have this community that just really adores the messaging that you put out. And I just wanted to ask you, you know, a couple of questions. You've been interviewed by Runner's World and on, on your community, you were quoted as saying, there's a whole subset of people who are just getting through a rough day with a run. And I think that, you know, in, in its simplest form just resonates with so many people. And I just was wondering, you know, your inspiration to become this public figure, because as you said, starting out, the fears of the 12 year old boys saying (laughs) that you're gross are so real because like, they're so real. So you have this huge following now and and what inspired that and how do you feel about putting yourself out there all the time in this way? Yeah, I think before I started posting, I really only was familiar with YouTube and the things I watched on YouTube were very much like how to do this. Oh, your toilet is uh this thing in your toilet's not working. Here's how to fix that. You know, really random stuff. If I did watch a specific person, it was probably because maybe they um, were like pregnant when I was. And it's fun to follow along with someone like that. So, but everything that I saw in terms of these specific people, it was very aesthetic. Their house was perfect. They were perfect. They were young. They were fit. They were pretty. They lived in New York City or some, you know, <laughs> very exciting. Lived in New York City. Yes. And so to answer your question in terms of like what inspired me to ha- have like this following, actually nothing, because in my mind, that was impossible. Like there is no way that you can have a following, which is why when I posted, I was like, I'm pretty safe because, you know, there might be the 12 year old boys that make fun of me, but there's no way this is going to blow up because I am a mom. I'm in my 30s, was in my 30s. And I live in the middle of nowhere. This is so boring. But what I can get is a couple of friends that are like, oh, here's what I do if I have a really tough run or if I don't want to get out the door, this is what I do. And yeah, that pain that you're feeling, this is, you know, what it's from. So I was, I, it's so, it's so weird to think that this is where I am now, because I think a lot of it was driven by those first comments that were like, oh my gosh, I relate to this. Or can you post more of this? This makes me feel seen. I think that was like my driver. Cause I'm like, okay, well, if there aren't people doing this and there's people out there that want to see it. And I would kind of like friends <laughs> who, who I could say this stuff to, um, you know, I'll just keep going because I like making the videos. Um, but I did not think it would get to this. Never thought I'd be in Runner's World magazine or any of the other things that I've been in. It's I, it's um, still unreal to me, actually. <laughs> 
You know, I love that you said that because I think a lot of people listening don't realize the important part that they play or that they have played in really creating you know, uh, or helping to create a platform like this, because Mm -hmm. those first couple of comments, those, you know, people who resonate with that type of messaging and they, they throw this kind of like almost a bone your way of like encouragement. Mm -hmm. And you're like, Oh, you're here too. Cool. Cool. Like you want to be friends. And then you realize it just like snowballs into something so much more important and platforms like that, that have been built out of like authenticity of just, you know, being brave. And going to share this thing. And then it snowballs from a bunch of people that are really like cheering you on. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, I, I did this thing, but I didn't set out to become a public figure. You guys cheered me on so much. Yeah. <laughs> that like here we are, right? Yeah. Like you just came out so loud to be like, keep going. <laughs> right. It's so true. Like I wouldn't be doing any of the stuff that I'm doing or – have any of these opportunities without those first people being like, hey, you should really keep talking about this. Or, you know, I'm really getting something out of this content. Like, if you feel like you're providing value to someone, that's incentive to not want to, you know, you don't want to stop because it's like, oh, I could help one person. That's pretty cool. Um, And yeah, it, it is. It's really neat. I think my favorite I don't know if I don't want to call it like a transition period or um uh, but something happened kind of early on when maybe I had a hundred thousand followers or something. I started to have a little trouble keeping up with comments. So like, you know, maybe I would get to some comments and then a couple hours would go by, and then I would come back and try and get to more. I wanted to I wanted everyone to be seen and uh, like reply to them. Um, but in the time where I wasn't in the comment section, people would say things like, oh, I'm, uh, I'm going to run my first mile today. And there would be like three or like 10 people sometimes replying already saying you can do it. Or I remember my first mile and, you know, all these encouraging things. I'm like, oh, this is beyond me at this point. That was when I was like, okay. I want to do this forever. This is amazing. I'm reaching people that are then encouraging these other people. And it still gives me chills to talk about because I feel like that can be missing in a lot of social media and a lot of comment sections. So I always feel so lucky that we have, excuse me, that we have that on mine. That's incredibly relatable. Yeah. I, it's, <laughs> yeah. We also, ha, you know, have have built a, a fitness community, and the pressure at first to be present literally everywhere, just to set the vibe. You got to set the vibe. You got to set the vibe. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it's such an immense amount of pressure. It takes everything to do it. But one day, that turnaround and going like, oh my god, I I didn't get here first but the vibe still there is yeah. like oh my god this is what i wanted to do so i i totally i feel you sis on that i feel you and congrats because that is a really difficult thing to yeah. create on social media it is it's oh, and far like, easier to yeah. create the negative yes and likewise to you guys this podcast is huge i mean your socials as well love the comment section i see myself i, I see in my comment section you guys getting tagged. I'm like, see, this is a nice overlap we have here. Yeah. It's it's amazing. I love it. Yeah, I love it so much. I always say, Rachel, like your vibe attracts your tribe. And like at first when we came into the space, we were like, wow, our first podcast was called Fuck the Scale. And we were like, we're not going to be welcomed into the fitness <laughs> community. <laughs> we, were like, we were like, we are just not going to be welcomed here. And like yeah. we were so small and we were like, well – This is what we have to say. So here we are. Um, And it's just like so nice that like the more you do it, it's almost like the life algorithm too, right? Like the more you do it, the more you put out that messaging, the more you surround yourself with that similar type of messaging, the more people you meet that are right along the same lines. And then it just becomes like we are just spreading like wildflower and and that – And then when you said like, oh, it's, you know, it's more prevalent now in the fitness space to kind of talk about the more authentic journey with running and like 
that's definitely true, but it's almost magnified when you're in that space that that's more of the content that you begin to see. And that's why we have Mm -hmm. some of the like audience overlaps where like people who are already, you know, following you and your journey and seeing how positive that is and, you know, reaching us in the same way or like some of the other, um, you know, people in this space. It's like, yes, let's, let's give a microphone to all of those voices. Let's just like blast this and all of the people who are a part of that community are blasting it too. And it's like, they are just killing it. They're just killing it. Like that's how I really feel. I'm like some of the, you know, first, um, you know, members of our community who told us like, you should start a podcast, you should do programming. And we're like, I don't know, maybe, (laughs) but they're the ones who like really were the drivers behind that. And it's, it's just like so cool. I wanted to ask you too, you're, you know, you're the queen of, um, or you call yourself the queen of, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. And I think number one, that's so relatable, but you have a number one tip on how to get out the door on low energy times, which, um, I find was, you know, obviously very relatable because I think a lot of us, when we start something, we're like just waiting for the energy, but there's always going to be those low energy times. There's always going to be the, I don't want to. And you call it play it forward. Can Mm -hmm. you explain, um, you know, what play it forward is? Yeah, I think so. I've heard this and I don't know if you guys drink alcohol. I heard you doing like alcohol or alternatives in another podcast. (laughs) We were just giving that as. Oh, okay. um, (laughs) People were doing dry January. We weren't doing dry January. (laughs) Just wanted wanted to clarify. But okay, so. When I did dry January last year and I was, um, you know, look, looking for tips and tricks and things like that, I heard uh, somebody talk about, I think they said maybe like playing the tape forward or it was something like that. Um, fast forwarding, I guess, if you will, what you would feel like if you had the drink versus if you didn't. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so, that can be applied to running or fitness in general when you really would rather take a nap or watch Netflix instead of doing X, Y, Z, whatever fitness it was for that day. And so every time I don't want to get out for a run, I play it forward and I think, okay, in one hour, how will I feel if I did not go for the run? And compare that to in one hour, how will I feel if I did go for the run? So after the run, I'm like less stressed. I feel invigorated probably from some fresh air. I feel accomplished. I absolutely feel better than everyone. And um, I think in that video, I was like, including your past self, which is the most important because that's who you want to be better than. Um, I always say like, don't compare yourself to anyone else. So just kidding with that. (laughs) But um, and then, you know, if I didn't get out for the run, how will I feel is definitely sluggish, tired, probably a bit of like shame in a way. I hate to admit that, but I feel like we all kind of feel that if it's like we have to get out for this run, didn't do it. You That shame is like the worst um, emotion to have, like physically, mentally, everything. Um, and I never want to feel that. So if I can prevent that, I'm going for the run. Um, and, you know, everyone's going to have different ways that they will feel, you know, that they can compare themselves to. Um, but those are mine. And, and, you know, I asked myself those questions this morning because I didn't want to do the workout. Um, and you guys have that, uh, January, like the month long fitness thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and that inspired me because I was like, you know what? Sorry, I'm going on a tangent here. I just switched the topic. Go, go, okay. go, this, go. <laughs> so the issue is, so I stuck with running and I'm like, why did I stick with running? And I can do that consistently, but I can't do the strength stuff or the, the other types of workouts. And I know they're so important for many things, including running. And I always just like pitter out with it. So I was like, okay, when I started running, I ran a mile a day for 30 days, just uh, disclaimer, I don't recommend that, but it was, it was just, I needed to carve out that time every day and I had to force myself to do it to like make that a habit. So yesterday I'm like, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work out every day for 30 days. So I'm forcing myself to make that time 
get over. The other thing is sore muscles. I hate that feeling. I am such a baby. Like I'll do a workout today. I'm so sore. And I would typically be like, well, I'll just wait till I'm not sore. And then I'll do it. <laughs> well, that's a week from now, you know? <laughs> so, but I, I love the approachable way that you guys are doing that. And I think, you know, January is such a good month to, for people to jump on something like that, because we were just talking about community. You know, if you're starting something in January, whether it's dry January or a fitness thing, there are so many other people out there commiserating with your misery. So it's like, it's perfect. Jump on those. Absolutely. We're always doing the anti, um, you know, because the January thing is like, ugh, you know, mm-hmm. all the people, new people. In the, it's like oh. so anti that because yes. it's such an important time for people to start new things that why would we ever want to discourage mm-hmm. any time when somebody decided Hey, this is this is the month. This is the day. You know, like do it. Right. Um. I love the I love the playing it forward. I don't know that we can pass that on because I don't know if the kids know what tapes are. But right. <laughs> I know that's kind of why it's just like play it forward instead of play the tape. So it's like you know with getting getting with the youths. <laughs> getting with the youths. Um I I really love that and I and I do want to just say, you know, with regards to strength training, it is a different sore than running. Mm-hmm. And um it's definitely something that you will get used to. Yeah. The same as you have gotten used to your running sore. Um but hats off to you for just like trying something new and getting after it this January. I think that um, just hearing from people who have consistently made fitness a part of their life that they're still learning and growing and adding new things mm-hmm. is just always really good for, for people to hear. Um, let's talk about mental health for a minute because you have said that mental ho- that running is a big part of your me- quote unquote mental health toolbox. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk more about the role running plays for you in keeping you mentally healthy? Yeah, for me, I feel like I I felt early on in that first month of running for sure that when I came back from a run, I was, you know, it's kind of like cliche, but you're, I felt like, oh, I'm a better mom because I'm more patient. You can instantly like, and I was only running for maybe 15 minutes, by the way. Um, so it wasn't like I had to carve out an hour, go for this long, strenuous run just to have some mental health benefits. Like this was 15 minutes. I got my heart rate up. I came back. Everything was less annoying. So that, that in itself could just, I could stop there and that be, (laughs) that'd be enough. But also, um, you know, as I started adding a little more distance and time to my runs, I found that I was because my brain, I don't know if it's the ADD specifically that does this, but it doesn't stop. So it's, it's almost like I have a constant stream of ideas, like shooting through and like, I can't, um, kind of like build out any one of them. Cause they just keep going, going, going. But when I'm on a run, it kind of slows everything down to where an idea will come into my head and I process it. And I think about it and sometimes it turns into a video or other times it's like a problem that I have personally with somebody else. And it'll just, without really having to think about it, I kind of come to a solution or a realization. Um, And I've had so many of those. um, It almost happens. I feel like every run, even if I have music on or something, (laughs) I can just like work through things. Um, so it's, that's been like a huge benefit to me. Um, just having, carving out that time, getting the endorphins flowing and whatever the chemicals are that do things. (laughs) Um, that's like, it's just been huge for me. It's like a shower talk on 10, you know, (laughs) it's like a shower talk, but like also all the blood is like flowing to your brain at the same time. So you're just like, oh my God, I can just solve everything right now. Yeah. Like yeah. sign me up to be president of the United States. Like <laughs> yeah. I, put me on the ballot because I'm I have ideas. <laughs> I I love how you said that too, because um, 
that sometimes like I have gotten in my own head about like, how could I be more productive with like, maybe I should just like work on this longer. Maybe I should just do this longer and not thinking about like how carving out move- time for movement is going to help me solve the things that I'm just like ruminating on right mm-hmm. now. And like, similarly, like ideas are just they're flowing through at a rapid speed and I can't catch them until I am moving. Mm -hmm. So like once I'm moving, I can like catch an idea and really like hone in on it. And I'm like, okay, now we can make something happen from this. Mm -hmm. Whereas like when almost I like I dedicated the time to the idea like it, it wasn't coming. <laughs> like it, I know the it, feeling. Exactly. Yeah. So my question to you both then is, since I get that feeling from running, will I get that from doing these other workouts like strength? Do you, do you get that same mental benefit from it? Or do you have to concentrate too hard on what you're doing? You an- you answer Kelsey because you've you've definitely got the the ADHD brain that <laughs> um, that can describe this the best I think. Yeah, so I definitely get it from the type. Of, I'm not a runner at all. Um, there is running in a lot of my workouts, but like the. I don't want to say like the maximum length as usual, but it's like usually like 800 meters. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes it'll be like 16, but like 1600, but like it's, it's usually around that. Um, I do get the same almost like relief and the same high from doing those type of workouts. Um, when it comes to strength training, like the same thing. When I'm able to almost like concentrate on, it's almost just like, Focusing on a singular thing that you're doing creates space in my brain so that like things just end up slowing down Mm -hmm. because I'm just like doing this repetitive thing or I'm like counting reps that like slows things down for me, almost like clears out a bunch of the clutter. Yeah. It feels like it's just like all in there from the day when I can just hear like one, two, three, and I'm like counting reps, but like the clarity that comes after that is almost like I cleaned the room. Yeah. It's like you meditated and you're getting that benefit from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, all right. I'm going to add this to my little mental checklist. Like it's good for my body, but it will be good for my brain too. Don't skip the workout. I do. I do think too, it's important to add that like certain types of strength training, more bodybuilding style is going to give in for me anyways, it gives me less of that clarity because my heart rate isn't up quite as high. If I'm like slow rep training, Mm -hmm. um, I think it comes best in like a Metcon situation where you're like working out for time and there will be a, a, a place where your movements won't need as much concentration. You know what I mean? There'll be more muscle memory, just similar to your runs, how you're not like thinking about striding every Every single second. Right. Um, the like, you know, the air squats will become the same way. And I think that working out for time allows you to just like completely release yourself to the workout rather than that slower bodybuilding kind of training where it's like a little bit. Um, I think that's such a funny point because I said to my training partner one time we were doing like some type of like a a cycle that had more slow, slower lifting like that. And I said to her, I'm like sitting there, I'm like, I got to get out of here. Are we going to start the clock soon? And she's like, get out of here. And I'm like, out of my brain. (laughs) I was like, I need to get out. And it wasn't like I need to get out of the gym. Like I need to get out of this loud space by turning on loud music. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, that makes total sense. It makes total sense. She gets it. She gets it. (laughs) Um, so I wanted to talk about rucking for a little bit because you talk about, um, rucking, improving your posture. Mm. Can you explain to our listeners first what rucking is? Cause I think a lot of people are maybe unfamiliar with that and, um, w- what you find to be beneficial as a runner from rucking. I feel like I should not speak on this and I will tell you why. So I, <laughs> um, did that video because my posture is bad. It's like, did you ever see those memes where it's that krill or that like little shrimp sitting at a desk and it's like like that? Yeah, that's me. (laughs) And I, I'm trying to correct it. So I've been, you know, uh, that, which is another reason why I want to do more strength, 
um, workouts because I know that it's because those muscles are weak and my core is non-existent. So I thought because my husband always, I didn't know it had a name. So rucking is, is you're walking with a pack that's full of weights and you can adjust the number of, of weights and People say it's good for like building your core muscles and you're strengthening your back, correcting your posture. But what I learned from the comments on my video where I did it is that because I am so <laughs> weak, I'm saying that about myself, not the people weren't saying that, but um, so I have bad posture. I should work on strengthening first and then rocking can really benefit that by like building it up and I, it does things for your heart rate. Um, yeah. So I don't want to act like I'm a, a, you know, rocking aficionado, but, uh, I do know that it has benefits. I just haven't gotten there yet. Cause I was getting ahead of myself. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for your honesty on that. That's <laughs> yeah. super refreshing. Um, the other thing is I think that that makes complete sense. I think that we don't load someone up for, um, you know, a one rep max back squat before we see that their air squat is looking like completely technically sound. Yeah. So that makes complete sense. Why are we putting you under load mm -hmm. um, when you haven't demonstrated the ability to hold your posture consistently not under a load. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So like, yeah, I, I totally get that. And I think that even that is a really eye-opening thing for people who might have been thinking about including rucking. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of runners – there's a big crossover with runners yeah. and rucking. Mm -hmm. um, but I think like you said, like let's walk before we run yeah. and let's um, do it unloaded before we're doing it loaded. And if you are able to hold great posture the entire run – then you're ready. Yeah. And if you're not, then maybe we still need to be working with the weights and some corrective movements. And that's just such great advice. Yeah. I love the idea of rocking because I like, I love walking. I love going for walks. I love being outside. So I think to me, I was like, oh, all I have to do is put weights on and then I can just go for this walk and then get more out of it. Not realizing like, oh, this can actually hurt my posture. Um, or, you know, put strain under, put the wrong muscles under strain and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm glad <laughs> I rely on social media a little too much to be like, Hey guys, is this, is this a good idea? And people are like, no. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I thought so. Like, I have, good good there good are, <laughs> there are physical therapists in my comments. There are, yeah, th there's the whole gamut. So. Yeah, learned that well, one. That's a that's a great point for especially for runners though because um so like I will do weighted walks all the time on like a, a rest day things like that where I'm just kind of like working through getting some movement in but nothing like super strenuous but um it's a great point especially for runners and people who struggle with posture and aren't doing any of those like pulling or strengthening exercises for the upper body to be able to support that load. Mm -hmm. I think um. I mean, like whatever form of exercise works for you, for whatever one you show up for, I'm like just all here for that. But, and you know that running is your thing. That's the thing that got you started. It's the, you know, what you've been able to maintain, but then, you know, moving, you know, beyond that and thinking like, well, my posture could really use some work and um, health is ultimately the goal. And I want to correct some of this posture. So working on developing some of those, like good for you. Yeah, not, you. not just my posture needing correcting, but what really pissed me off was I helped my husband move a dresser and it took us maybe 30 seconds. And the next day I'm like, wow, why is, why are my shoulders and like my chest is sore and everything? I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? It was <laughs> like that. I'm sorry. That's unacceptable. I need <laughs> to, I do not want to be sore from 30 seconds of moving a dresser that was not even that heavy. And so if I got that sore from that, that means I'm going to be held back by like, there's lots of, you know, in the summer where you see all these people out and they're like, oh, like my husband tries these random things. He's into windsurfing now. And I'm like, who even, who even does that? I have no idea, but he'll like meet these random people. And he's like, Hey, can I jump on that? And 
he's able to because he's he um does strength stuff and he's yeah. like that whereas i would love to just hop on something like that but i would be completely burned out in my muscles after just 10 seconds of holding myself there so i think that's also a, like another push for me to do more strength work is i don't want to miss out on random fun stuff like that because I do pass a lot of stuff up like, oh, no, I don't have the core for that, you know, and I'm assuming I'm not sure of your audience. I know it's just skewed mainly female. I have no idea. Yeah, very Are, much. And they're yes. probably already fit or no. Um, I would say, you know, like, first of all, Great. If you're listening to a fitness podcast, like I'm, I'm here for it. Like, you know, I, I don't think that the majority of people necessarily would consider themselves fit because okay. like, what is that? What does that look like? Yeah. So um, it might relate to what I'm saying that I'm yeah. so weak that I got sore from moving a dresser. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> well, if you're, Absolutely. if I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There's been times in my life where <laughs> I have said the same thing and and you're right. Like drawing that line mm -hmm. and saying like, "Whoa, whatever it whoa. is." Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Whatever wherever your line is. And I think that's so much of the starting point for so many people's fitness journey is they hit a line where they go, "Wait a minute." Yeah. You know, that's something that I that I should, quote unquote, be able to do and I can't. And what we push so much about, you know, the why behind your fitness, of course, everybody's is going to be unique, but that like, you know, being ready for life and not being limited by your body for all the amazing things that life holds and never saying, I would really love to do that, but my body isn't at a place where it can. And mm -hmm. like training with that in mind of just like limitless life yeah. Yeah. is just, yeah, that's it. Right. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Being ready for life. Mm -hmm. I like that. There's so much stuff to do. There's yeah. so, so much, much stuff <laughs> to <laughs> freaking do. And like, who wants to miss out on any of it? I mean, it's just so exciting. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, your audience is they love you. They literally adore you. And that's, you know, that like we've said, <laughs> that's hard to do on social because it's, you know, there are some people out there. But um, I think you, you were quoted for saying, for most of my life, I've been a person who quits everything I start, plagued by self-doubt and a never good at anything internal narrative mm -hmm. playing on repeat. Yes. First of all, relatable on 10. Okay. <laughs> um, so many people are like, wow, I, I've never heard it described like that, but that's me. How are you feeling these days about that statement? These days, I well, I feel like that negative um, self-narrative is still there in a sense. Um, it might be quieter because I have stuck with one thing, which is running. And that gives me like, you know, the thing where I'm, I maybe tell myself, well, I don't quit everything, but I do still get frustrated, you know, when I, I know we've been talking about like strength training is the great example. I'm always trying to stick with that. And then I don't, and then I feel frustrated. Um, or it can be anything like, oh, I'm going to drink enough water. And then, you know, you don't you feel frustrated. So I feel like I'm trying to, at this point, give myself grace because we live in a world where we're bombarded with, you should do this. You should do this. If you don't do this, you're going to have a heart attack, you know, like, or you put in your symptoms to WebMD and you're dying. So it's definitely every dying every time, every time. <laughs> and so I've been giving myself grace because I'm like, Hey, I'm doing this like X, Y, Z to better myself in this way. Just because I can't add A, B, and C to that doesn't mean that I should feel bad about myself. Like do what you can and just be better than your past self, you know? Um, so I feel like I have more of a positive attitude now. 
Um, but like I said, I do get on that negative um, thing where it's al- it's not, I wouldn't say it's self-sabotage so much as it is almost like confirming the negative thought that I had. Like, oh, see, I knew I wouldn't stick with that strength training because I never do. Um, so that's what I'm kind of trying to work toward. We're interrupting this podcast to tell you about the coolest leggings that have ever been on the planet ever. And if you are going to try to crush this new year, you need them. Why are you laughing? (laughs) You sounded like that kid. Have you ever had a dream where (laughs) – have you ever tried the best leggings and then they are sweat proof? (laughs) No, it's so true. Sweat proof, squat proof. They are so freaking comfortable and they have pockets. If you're listening to this podcast and you're not currently wearing our leggings – I got to tell you, you are missing the boat, Sid. You're missing the boat. And the thing is, most people don't know as they start to get new leggings that not all leggings are created equal. And you don't know that your leggings are see-through until you've been wearing them for a month at the gym and someone gets up the courage to tell you that they've been seeing through. Our leggings never see through, completely squat-proof. Um, sweat proof and they stay up while you're working out. So grab a pair for this new year at constantlyvarygear.com. I love that. I think a lot of people are definitely at myself included because we're all fighting these battles of like, here's the reason why you're not good enough. <laughs> and it's like, shh. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I call them the doubt sisters because they just can come in so loud yeah. and point out everything that you're doing wrong and miss everything that you're doing right. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, running isn't the only thing you stuck with because you haven't thrown out your kids yet, right? Have you? (laughs) They're still still hanging on. Have you thrown out your husband? (laughs) Right, right. I mean, it's not the only thing you stuck with. Like, let's be real. I know. And that's, that's the other thing is I feel like we all have so much going on. And, you know, even if you're not a parent, the social expectations of society that you constantly have to be busy. You have to be in peak health, worry about your bone density, worry about your hydration, worry about your hair health. Like there's so much information coming so much. at us at all times. And it, so it, it's just so overwhelming. We have too many things on our plates and it's easy to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't take that vitamin for every day for six months. Now I, you know, it's, uh, it's great. It's, it's now I'm fun. dying. Right. According to WebMD. Yep. Yep. Damn it. <laughs> well, I recently made a video that was like going into 2024 and it was like, uh, trying to text everybody back, drink enough water, excel in my career. Like, and it was like listing off all these things. It was just like me dying on the floor. Yes. And so many people were like, I feel that. And it's yeah. just like from a societal perspective, like we're all generally overwhelmed mm-hmm. and feeling like we're missing in some area. And something that Rachel and I talk about a lot is that it's a pie. You can't just add a whole bunch of things and expect to excel in every one of those areas. Like it's got to come from somewhere. It's got to move and shift. And sometimes in certain seasons of our lives, it's, it's more in one area, less in one, another area, but like it's all working. So when we shift something from another area into the other, we kind of ignore what we moved it into and where our success was and like yeah. why didn't I do that as well mm. like I said to myself the other day I'm like wow I'm such a bad dog mom like I forgot to give her her like joint supplements like two days ago I was like I'm the worst right your <laughs> she, brain just she's goes gonna there. die yeah. <laughs> like, what? I I feel like it's so relatable and one of a recent video I said like what's in for 2024 and one of the things was surviving not thriving and I was like name one person that's thriving right now and I mean I was joking but also not and there were some people that were like actually Taylor Swift and I'm like Valid, but valid. <laughs> but the fact valid. that the only person that we could name was Taylor Swift that's not, I mean, so, so every, there's so many people that feel the same way, like that. Oh, cause I didn't give my dog, you know, the joint supplements. I'm not 
I'm not doing well and I'm not a good dog mom. It's something I feel like we <laughs> like all are doing. Like, yeah. I, you know what? I bet though. I bet if you ask Taylor Swift, like right. not that she's not thriving, I bet she would have something to say mm-hmm. where, you know, if she shifted certain areas of like her career or her relationship or whatever it is, there's one that's that's failing. There's one that's falling behind. There's a person she didn't text back. There's some manager she pissed off. There's- But let's be honest. She's better than all of us. (laughs) So hats off to you, girl. Yeah, shout out Taylor Swift. Wow. If you ever want to come on with us, we're we're here. We're here for you. I think that I say (laughs) what? Prime audience right there. Um, I did the next, we parlay into this like next question really nicely, actually. Um, You know, despite all your self proclaimed shortcomings, you have run three marathons. Mm -hmm. First of all, congratulations. Hell yes, girl. (laughs) Congratulations. How many marathons you run, Taylor? (laughs) Right? She probably runs one every like show on stage. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, and you've amassed this, you know, massive social media following. Um, what do you kind of attribute your success to in these areas? And are you surprised at all with how your story is playing out? Yeah, I feel like I attribute the success to, like I said earlier, the, uh, the audience of whatever platform it is. Um, they're, you know, they relate to it, they comment, they like it, they share it with a friend, spreading the relatability, authenticity. That's really what propels me forward. Um, And I'm definitely surprised because I feel like at each stage um, that I went through, I mentioned like reaching 100,000 followers or um then realizing, oh, wow, it's a community in the comment section. And then, oh my gosh, I'm somehow on the Today Show. Like the weirdest stuff began happening and it's still happening. So yeah, I'm I'm always, I don't know if it's imposter syndrome or if this stuff really is bizarre <laughs> because I, I still feel like that. I'm never like, yeah, that makes sense that I'm in that magazine. No. Every time I'm like, are you are you guys sure? Because I'm pretty sure your readers are not going to like this. Or, um, and yeah, so it, it is very surprising to me. Um, I feel lucky every day, though, because it is, um, I get to be creative. I get to put these ideas that come into my head out there. I feel like they're helping some people to either laugh or feel better about themselves or motivate them um, to do something. Because sometimes all it takes is like seeing someone that looks like you and acts like you being able to do something you didn't think that you could do. Um, That to me is like the ultimate reward when I'm at a marathon and someone said someone in the marathon is like, I signed up for this because of you. And they're at like mile 24. So it's like, that's why in those videos, I'm crying the whole time because I hear stuff like that. So I feel like the luckiest person on earth, like who gets, it's, it's not common that you get to change someone's sometimes like their life trajectory. They did not think they could run a marathon. They saw me struggling in the training and then completing the marathon And then they sign up like that's crazy to me. Um, And you guys are motivating people, making them feel like they're not the only ones. So you guys get the feeling that you are helping people. It's very rewarding. It's um, I know people look at influencers as like, oh, my gosh, they are so obnoxious and they're you know, just trying to sell things. And I feel like they're overlooking um, the type of people that are helping people, um, whether it's like providing value in education or entertainment or motivation. Like I look to people all the time for motivation um, because motivation happens like one day and then it goes away. (laughs) 
That's for sure. Right. Well, I think, you know, among the the amazing accolades that things that you have not quit, um, people do not understand, I think, sometimes the amount of dedication that it takes to be an influencer and not like the kind with the booty scrunch leggings, not that kind. <laughs> um, <laughs> the kind that is out there changing lives. Um, the amount of content that you have to put out in order to reach a larger audience to get your message heard and to in- continue to inspire more people, it is sometimes overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Um, the amount of creativity that goes in and the amount of just like your like all of your heart that goes into these videos and needing to keep coming up with fresh content and keep putting yourself out there even when you like you hate your face and you're <laughs> like voice. I would rather yeah. never see yeah my voice I hate my everything like you just have to keep showing up and putting that face that you hate in front of the camera <laughs> because you're doing you you owe the people the thing right? It's a lot. It's a lot of pressure. And I just want to say to you that not only do we understand that pressure, but that we also have to take a minute and just applaud you for continuing to work through that because the greater good is in view and you can see it and you can taste it and you have to touch these people and you have to continue to know that some people are at that marathon because of your video. And it's just, I just want to say how much we appreciate and love what you've done for the space because it's really important. Thank you. And likewise to you guys. I mean, it is, I feel like the creativity aspect, like the ideas come like a tidal wave like I have too many but it's the execution and scheduling the time to film and who's gonna film what camera do I need like all these little like woe is me you know like it's it's not like it, I feel that it's like <laughs> I'm not going to you know a steel mill or like a coal mine and slaving away so it's the actual work it is not like physical labor it's just a lot of um, moving pieces and now all of a sudden you're making decisions that could really affect like a lot of things um yeah so it's because I set out doing this not realizing it could get to this point I think I'm still a little behind in that like oh okay I need to maybe hire somebody or have help with something. Um, so yeah, it it's a lot, but I feel like it's so worth it just for those moments. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just want to sort of close with the fact that, you know, you've been in the space and you've been out there, you know, searching out information. You said <laughs> you're quoted as saying there's an overwhelming amount of running information on and off the internet, a lot of which was conflicting mm-hmm. or trying to sell you something. Yeah. And you are, and, and we can so deep dive on these things we love, right? Like what is the best shoe? What is the best watch? Like how, you know, how should I be fueling? And these things like, like, like you said, like, how am I supposed to text everybody back and be a good mom? And like, (laughs) it's just, it's a lot. And when we love something, we can kind of take it there. Um, But, you know, the learning never really stops. And I was wondering if you might share something that you've learned um, with our listeners that you feel like has really benefited your health journey in all of the research. Oh, wow. That's a loaded question. Um, I'll, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I I feel like, um, something I learned recently that comes to mind that I didn't know, and it has made a difference in, in my running is I didn't realize that even if you're doing like a, a 30 minute run, you need to properly fuel beforehand as if you're doing like a long run. So you need to have the right amount of carbs and everything else. I was, I'm like, Oh, 30 minute run. Yeah. I just, uh, (laughs) haven't eaten for six hours. I'll go do the run and then I'll refuel. And then I'm on the run 
wondering why I have low energy and the next day, why are my muscles so sore when I usually wouldn't get sore? Um, so that was kind of eye opening to me, um, that just because it's a 30 minute run doesn't mean you don't have to fuel beforehand. Um, you know, that's a great one because nutrition is such an important piece of whatever modality of fitness, like our listeners are choosing to do, like whether it's strength training, whether it's running, whether it's, you know, um, like short spurts of conditioning, but nutrition is such an important part of like how you're going to feel post whatever it is that you're doing. And I think when a lot of people start out and I'm just like going to throw the caveat, like, however you start amazing. Once Mm -hmm. we get to optimizing, we'll get to optimizing. But the diet industry works in this way that says like, you're going to start working out. You should start limiting your calorie intake. And it's like, those two things are set up for a perfect storm of disaster Mm -hmm. for people who are just starting a fitness journey. Yeah, We want you to eat less consume less food, and we want you to do more activity. And people are wondering, why am I so sore? Why am I like the the point, like getting up is extremely painful. And then we gaslight them into saying that that's their fault Mm -hmm. and they're not actually that sore. Mm -hmm. Or the reason why they're sore is their fault because they're not at a a fitness level. And (laughs) I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. Like we have like the wrong information. Then we're gaslighting them and then working on shame for doing the thing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's it's a vicious cycle. And that's why, you know, with running and also just recently with this strength thing, I, I was trying to figure out, well, how many days a week should I do this? Okay. How much time to recover? Okay. What types of things are you supposed to eat if you do this? And then I had to do full stop. I went to YouTube. I looked up a 30 minute full body workout. I'm like, nope, just doing it. Cause it gets to a point where you just have to jump in or else. So I I read this thing the other day could have even been from you guys, (laughs) but it was like, (laughs) it was like you in a month, you could have a month of results or you could have a month of excuses. Um, that's, that's what it is. Cause in that month where you're just like trying to learn everything that you can, you could have already been doing the thing. Yeah. And not perfect, but like, who cares? Far from that. perfect. Who in my cares? Case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, never perfect. How about right. never perfect? And how about that's not <laughs> yeah. even the goal? Right. How about the only goal is just like to do the thing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. However, it gets done instead of not doing the thing. Yeah. Um, all right. So we have to ask you because you are the Grams expert on whether or not your running shorts are gobbling you up. <laughs> okay. Um, have you tried CBG? <laughs> I have not. And it is one of the brands that is in my comment section. So I do, I would like to form, former, formally <laughs> request <laughs> some suggestions. Yep. It's on the way. It's on its okay. way. It's on its okay. way to you. Okay. We know this problem. We've lived <laughs> this problem. We created a brand around this problem. <laughs> Correct. Because um, that was just networking. Right. For, uh, we're literally the Thick Thighs Save Lives podcast, <laughs> yeah. Aaron. I mean, yes. the thighs will gobble. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. It doesn't need to be running. Obviously, like you guys do many different workouts and it's an issue. I don't understand how it is in this day and age. (laughs) Why? Come on. Why we have our shorts riding up our thighs. I really, I, I mean, it's an issue. Also, now that it's winter, the leggings rolling down, falling down. I'm, I'm just in, in a constant state of rage. I can't oh handle it. Get that. Like, for, where's my flying car? Yeah. And why have we not solved this leggings falling down problem? Yeah. It's, okay. it's unacceptable. You put we, one little thing in the pocket and they're off your butt. I ran, I was, I, uh, we did this like half marathon relay thing and it was my turn to start running. I was wearing these leggings for the first time, which I know is a mistake. And uh, I'm running up this hill. Someone comes up to me and they're like, oh my gosh it's you, you know, and which is usually a situation I love. It's, it's entertaining. I'm getting to engage with someone that watches my videos. Meanwhile, my leggings were falling down so bad and my underwear, it was off my butt. 
So yeah. my underwear is off my butt. I'm pulling up my leggings uh, as I'm trying That's to like a diaper. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I, I just had to say, like, I really am wanting to talk to you, but my leggings are completely falling down. And like, so we just kind of had this moment of connection and yeah. honesty and it was I'm, I'm like I made a friend that day just, I'm about to moon the neighborhood right it was I was so angry that whole I only had to run m- maybe three miles or something I was pissed off the whole time I'm like I cannot believe these are allowed to be sold <laughs> well Erin <laughs> we have created a company <laughs> around that whole entire problem and we would love to get you in some CBG because um yes we would we would love to have you try our products because uh you know you are the expert and we'd love to hear your feedback um because yeah the thighs the thighs uh, they they're not a they're problem powerful. They're, they're not the problem. <laughs> they're not the problem, okay? Right. It's the fabric. So um, we'll get you in some CVG. And if you could tell our listeners where they can find you, where are you struggle running? Where can they connect with you on socials? Like they're going to love you and they're going to want more. So tell us. Okay. First of all, well, if you're listening to this podcast, you like podcasts. So uh, my podcast is called Non-Members Only. It's not necessarily about fitness. It's just if you feel like hanging out with people and laughing and but you don't actually want to physically hang out with people, listen yeah. to the podcast. That's a if great way you, to put it. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like some uh, entertainment and short form content, I am Erin Azar on Instagram and TikTok, um, also known as Mrs. Space Cadet and also YouTube. Sometimes I'm on there. Just got to get on there. Too. Just dilly dallying around. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to attach some of those in the show notes to you guys. So if you want to have an easy click to find Erin, like we'll just give you quick, easy access in there. Thank you. you definitely <laughs> want to fall. I was following you well before, um, you know, our publicist asked for you to come on. I was like, oh, yeah, love her. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know. I said, like, I said, oh, have you seen the shorts gobbling? <laughs> exactly. Like, right up your alley. Ev- yeah. Everybody in our marketing meeting knows <laughs> about you um, because Kelsey brings you up constantly. So, <laughs> yay, Kelsey champion. <laughs> You're so adored. Thank you, All right, guys. guys. Thank you so much for coming on and definitely check out Erin. Yay. Thank you.